if you run a learning algorithm and it doesn't do as well as you were hoping, almost all the time it will be because you have either a high bias problem or a high variance problem. In other words, either an underfitting problem or an overfitting problem. And in this case, it's very important to figure out which of these two problems, is it bias or variance or a bit of both, that you actually have. Because knowing which of these two things is happening will give a very strong indicator for what are the useful and promising ways to try to improve your algorithm. In this video, I'd like to delve more deeply into this bias and variance issue and understand them better, as well as figure out how to look at the learning algorithm and evaluate or diagnose whether we might have a bias problem or a variance problem, since this will be critical to figuring out how to improve the performance of a learning algorithm that you may implement. So you've already seen this figure a few times, where if you fit two simple hypotheses, like a straight line that underfits the data, if you fit a two complex hypothesis, then that might fit the training set perfectly, but overfit the data, and it's maybe a hypothesis of some intermediate level of complexity, so of some maybe degree two polynomial, so not too low and not too high degree, that's uh, just right and gives you the best uh, generalization error of all of these options. Now that we're armed with the notion of train, training and validation in test sets, we can understand the concepts of bias and variance a little bit better. Concretely, let's let our training error and cross-validation error be defined as in the previous videos. Just say the squared error, the average squared error as measured on the training set or as measured on the cross-validation set. Now let's plot the following figure. On the horizontal axis, I'm going to plot the degree of polynomial. So as I go to the right, I'm going to, I'm going to be fitting higher and higher order polynomials. So way on the left of this figure, where maybe d equals 1, I'm going to be fitting very simple functions. Whereas way here on the right of the horizontal axis, I um, have much larger values of d, so a much higher degree polynomial. And so here, that's going to correspond to fitting much more complex functions to your training set. Let's look at the training error and the cross-validation error and plot them on this figure. Let's start with the training error. As we increase the degree of the polynomial, we're going to be able to fit our training set better and better. And so if uh, d equals 1, we're going to have a relatively high training error. If we have a very high degree polynomial, our training error is going to be really low, maybe even 0, because we'll fit the training set really well. And so as we increase the degree of polynomial, we find typically that the training error decreases. So I'm going to write j subscript train of theta there, because our training error tends to decrease with the uh, degree of the polynomial that we fit to the data. Next, let's look at the cross-validation error. Or for that matter, if we look at the test set error, we'll get a pretty similar result as if, if we were to plot the cross-validation error. So we know that if d equals 1, we're fitting a very simple function, and so we may be underfitting the training set, and so we're going to have a very high cross-validation error. If we fit you know, an intermediate degree polynomial, this we had a d equals 2 in our example in the previous slide, we're going to have a much lower cross-validation error because we're just fitting, uh, finding a much better fit to the data. And conversely, if d were too high, so if d took on, say, a value of 4, then we're again overfitting, and so we end up with a high value for cross-validation error. So if you were to vary this smoothly and plot a curve, you might end up with a curve like that, where that's jcv of theta. And again, if you plot j test of theta, you get something very similar. And so this sort of plot also helps us to better understand the notions of bias and variance. Concretely, suppose you've applied a learning algorithm and it's not performing as well as you were hoping. So, so if, if your cross-validation set error or your test set error is high, how can we figure out if the learning algorithm is suffering from high bias or if it's suffering from high variance? So the setting of the cross-validation error being high corresponds to either this regime or this regime. So this regime on the left corresponds to a high bias problem. That is, if you're fitting a overly low order polynomial, such as a d equals 1, when we really needed a higher order polynomial to fit the data. Whereas in contrast, this regime corresponds to a high variance problem.
that is if D, the degree of polynomial, was too large for the data set that we have. And this figure gives us a clue for how to distinguish between these two cases. Concretely, for the high bias case, that is the case of underfitting, what we find is that both the cross-validation error and the training error are going to be high. So if your algorithm is suffering from a bias problem, the uh, training set error will be high. And you might find that the cross-validation error will also be high. It might be a close, maybe just slightly higher than a training error. And so if you see this combination, that's a sign that your algorithm may be suffering from high bias. In contrast, if your algorithm is suffering from high variance, then if you look here, we'll notice that J train, that is the training error, is going to be low. That is, you're fitting the training set very well, whereas your cross validation error, um, assuming that this is, uh, say, the squared error, which you're trying to minimize, say, whereas in contrast, your error on the cross validation set, or your cost function on the cross validation set, will be much bigger than your training set error. So this is uh, a double greater than sign. That's the math symbol for much greater than, denoted by two greater than signs. And so if you see this combination of uh, values, then that might give you, that's a clue that your learning algorithm may be suffering from high variance and might be overfitting. And the key that distinguishes these two cases is if you have a high bias problem, your training set error will also be high. Your hypothesis is just not fitting the training set well. And uh, if you have a high variance problem, your training set error will usually be low. That is much lower than your cross-validation error. So hopefully that gives you a somewhat better understanding of the two problems of bias and variance. I still have a lot more to say about bias and variance in the next few videos, but what we'll see later is that by diagnosing whether a learning algorithm may be suffering from high bias or high variance, we'll show you even more details on how to do that in later videos. But we'll see that by figuring out whether a learning algorithm may be suffering from high bias or high variance, or a combination of both, that that would give us much better guidance for what might be promising things to try in order to improve the performance of a learning algorithm.